three a live look as the runners continue to enter Folsom Field and make their way toward the finish line of the Boulder Boulder, which has been underway for about an hour now. Good morning to you. I'm Brian Sanders. We do have team coverage along the race course this morning. All morning long, we've seen thousands of runners and spectators just excited to have this tradition back in person in full for the first time in three years. So we're going to check in with them just ahead. We do want to get a check of our forecast from Katie because the weather has been great for running, not so great for the grill master. Uh, no, it's not going to be feeling like summer this afternoon with daytime highs topping out in the upper 60s, but great running, running weather this morning. A live look from Pearl Street Mall owner, a partly to mostly cloudy sky in Denver right now. Temperatures are in the low 50s. Clouds are increasing. So are the winds sustained from the west at 18 miles per hour. You head further to the west into portions of the high country. We've picking up some moderate to even heavy snow at times. It's a winter wonderland up over Winter Park. And as you can see from our radar and satellite, a pretty active picture just in the last 15 minutes or so. We were tracking another storm rolling into Johnstown, making its way just west of LaSalle at this area with some scattered showers over the northeastern plains and into the foothills into Boulder. Right now it is dry and same in Denver, but we do have that slight chance to pick up an isolated storm or showers to get into this afternoon and the heaviest snow west into Carbondale down through Marble. It's a rain snow mix there at lower terrain, but above tree line we are seeing that snow really accumulate. Here's our future cast as we get into this afternoon. Very strong winds over higher terrain could make for some limited visibility over those higher mountain passes where the snow will be falling. And then later on this afternoon, Jason, a slight chance for an isolated shower or storm across the plains. Yeah, it is really tough right now to get over the uh, Vail Pass area, both on east and westbound side of I-70 as they've closed it down there. So the westbound side of I-70 is closed down to Silverthorne, which is here for the adverse driving conditions. I-70 now is closed east and westbound over Vail Pass. So Vail to Copper Mountain, I-70 is closed down right now for the snowy conditions we're dealing with there. Take a look at the drive out to the east side of town. The other trouble spot since 3.30 this morning, northbound 225 to go west I-70 has been closed down. All traffic is going east. Take a look from the camera back here at 17th. It's backed up from Colfax all the way up there. So I would use some of the side roads exit 6th Avenue, exit Colfax, and then use those roads to get either to airport to the east or over Havana, Peoria to get around it that way as well. Patrick, Zach, well, we've been waiting three years for the return of the Boulder Boulder, and one of the great things about this race is that you're in costume. A lot of people are, and just having fun out there, being back together for the first time uh, for this great event, Nicole. Yeah, it is. I mean, the costumes are one of the best parts. I've got, I've got Patrick, Spencer, uh, Zach. Sorry, got them all uh, here. Uh, you guys, the chicken suit, always a classic out this here. This guy, what? he gave it to me. <laughs> it, it keeps you a little warmer today? Yeah, we figured if we're not going to run fast, you might as well run fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How fast do you think you'll do this? You're a race car driver. Yeah, it should be pretty fast I think it'll here. probably be like average 70 miles an hour the whole time. Okay, yeah, yeah. pretty pretty good. And you are representing uh, today America. Yeah, Thanks I really wanted to do something to memorialize uh, our country. Our country, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Well, good. You're running, running for good reasons out here. Great to talk to you guys. I'll let you get back into All your right. wave here. I hope we find out why he crosses the road. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we'll find uh, crossing uh, the Folsom Field finish line here. Yeah, such a fun event, obviously. Um, this this was started 40, uh, well, what are we at now? 43 years ago, 1979 was the first running of the Boulder Boulder. A man named Frank Shorter, U.S. Olympic gold medalist, started it all. Frank Shorter, this is where the punches of bananas. One of our co-founders, Frank Shorter, um, uh, this year, 2022, celebrates 50 years of his winning the Olympic gold medal in 1972. So Frank's going to serve as the official starter of the race. And so he'll start the 85 waves on race morning. He'll shoot the start pistol 85 times. And, and then we have a fun uh, recognition for him in the stadium. Yeah. Yeah, Frank Porter up in the stands right now as all the waves keep rolling through. We're about halfway through the waves right now. Colette Bordelon on the other end of this at the finish line in Folsom Field. Who have we seen come across, uh, Colette? I have seen so many people come across this finish line, and I 
don't care how many times this race happened while I was in school here, I am always so impressed by how quickly these runners do it. I'm with Sarah and Lizzie right now. They both ran this race a number of times. How do you guys know each other? We actually met in mile four. Um, she was going faster than me and I was like, gotta stay with her. So, I mean, it seems like people make friends out here. Someone told me you're running with 30,000 of your closest friends. Yes, we love it. Yeah, it was super fun meeting her on the course. Yeah. I know they were standing together and I was like, oh, I thought you guys knew each other. <laughs> and you ran it how many times again? This is actually my 11th year. I've been running it since I was six. Yeah, it's been a great time. I love it every single year. So did you start running it with your parents? So actually, it's three generations that run it. My mom and my sister will come through soon, and then my grandpa will come through a little bit later. What? I love that. So what does this race mean to you? Oh, I just love it. I think it's really fun to be in Boulder and just fun to like celebrate Memorial Day, the military, and my dad and I used to run it, so it's been really great, yeah. And to be back in person this year, what was that like? I love it. The community is what makes running good for me, so it's my favorite part to be able to see everybody from the slip and slides to the belly dancers, and then even like the military that like marches it and everything. It's so special to be out here and to talk to you guys after finishing this. So thank you for spending a little bit of time with us this morning. You can definitely feel the sense of community out here that you guys were talking about. Yeah, it is. It's such a wonderful uh, community event. Christian Lopez is along the Pearl Street Mall, where, uh, which is part of the course. So, Christian, Christian, you've been getting to see some runners coming by for your first Boulder Boulder ever. How are you liking it? <laughs> Yeah, Nicole, it's been so much fun cheering these runners on. As you can see behind me, the energy out here is just amazing. The community is so excited for the event's return for the first time since the pandemic. We also talked to businesses here on Pearl Street. At Ozo Coffee, the workers told me that they just love all of the excitement the Boulder Boulder brings. They're also very grateful that these traditions are coming back after a few years of not having them because of the pandemic. And of course, with so many people out here, they're expecting to have a very busy day. We are so excited to have it back. So excited. And what is your favorite part of the event? There, it just brings such an energy to the city and it's such a special event to have. We see crowds of people outside the store, we get lots of business. Um, it's just wonderful to be a part of it. We're grateful that it's happening again. We are grateful that there's more of a return to some of the traditions and some of the opportunities that we had as a city and as a community before the pandemic started. Such an incredible event. We also have a Denver 7 tent out here if you're near the Pearl Street Mall where you can get a cowbell and a sweatband. Nicole, I'm going to send it back to you. I'm going to keep uh, to uh, cheering on minutes. these runners that are passing through. Good morning. More, right, more cowbell. Time. Yes, Christian, uh, I'm so glad you're having a great time out there. I've been trying to think of where to go for lunch after this is all over today. Boulder is such a great city, and we're so proud to support the businesses here. Uh, Brian, it's it's just so much fun to be back. The tradition returns. That's the theme this year. A, a lot of celebrating, which are, it's so great to see, and some great tributes on the way at Folsom Field later. Thank you, Nicole, as we head to Arlington National Cemetery today, where President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris will lay a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier as we watch the uh, changing of the guard there. On Saturday, visitors were allowed to place flowers at the site, which is dedicated to military members whose remains have not been identified. Arlington National Cemetery is the final resting place for about 400,000 service members. If you are hitting the road for your Memorial Day travels, gas prices hit a 10 year high over the weekend. According to AAA, the national average is 462 a gallon. Colorado is still faring much better at 427 a gallon. The cost surged about 30% though since Russia invaded Ukraine back in February. Demand usually starts to fall in August, which could help lower prices, but forecasters predict an above average hurricane season and that might keep prices high. Thousands of flights were canceled over the weekend and unfortunately it's having a ripple effect today. 1200 flights have been canceled nationally. 
That includes only 11 in or out of DIA, which is not too bad. Uh, but just like we saw over the weekend, Delta has had the most cancellations across the country. They blame bad weather and air traffic control issues. DIA expects more than a million passengers to uh, go through the airport this weekend. AAA says Denver will be a top destination for travelers over Memorial Day. Other cities on the list include Orlando, Seattle, Miami, Las Vegas, Anaheim, and New York. AAA says despite the rising prices and COVID uncertainty, reservations for flights, hotels, and cruises are running twice as strong as they were this time last year. Staying in the race, we're going to introduce you to this 98-year-old set to complete this year's Boulder Boulder for the seventh time surrounded by three generations of family members.